Hey everybody, my name is John Finn and I am super excited today. I finally got my shipment of Masterverse Wave 4, 4 for 4. Um, I've been looking forward to this set for quite a while since it was announced and I ordered it months and months and months ago and finally Big Bad Toy Store came through and FedEx Smart Post finally delivered it and now we've got Merman. Tila in her regular, like, uh, guards, Captain Garb. We've got uh, Viking He-Man, excuse me, and Barbarian Skeletor. Let's take a look at each of these in the package, then let's get them open, and let's see what they have to offer. Starting things off with the one and only Merman. Now, this is Merman as represented in the Masters of the Universe Revelation series from Netflix. And there are two from the Revelation series in this wave and two from the new Eternia line, which we'll talk about in a minute. But this is Merman from the Revelation. He is different from the Merman from Filmation or the other uh, vintage lines because he is kind of gnarled. And you can see it's got the, the eye that's scratched up. He's got the scars all over him. Comes with this really cool looking sword-like scimitar uh, we've got the cool uh, is that a dident a bident it's like a trident but with two instead of three uh, he has two extra sets of hand sculpts you can see there he's got kind of a uh, the open hands here on this side he's got fists on this side and he's got gripping hands in the package itself looks pretty cool I like his loincloth made of uh, like kelpie type leaves you can see there's webbing in between the fingers themselves. I really like that touch. That's a really cool touch. A little, nice little thing of detail there. He's got that kind of snarling face there. We've already seen the art on the side and the art on the back is much better than some of the previous Revelation figures. There's actually a lot going on here. You've got this tentacle monster coming up. I wonder if that's like the weird tentacle rat cat monster thing that we've seen on a lot of the uh, Origins artwork. But he looks cool. He looks dynamic. He looks like he's kind of a swashbuckling uh, villain anti-hero type guy and I dig that I really liked him in the series um, so yeah that's really cool now let's go ahead and let's take a look at Tila from Revelation and here is the bad bitch herself Tila I fucking love this the colors are bright it's got this nice gold to it the white looks really cool and crisp she's got two head sculpts i'm not gonna lie i love this hair down head sculpt a lot more um i don't know what it is about the the one with the tiara it just it doesn't hit me the same as this one does but she also comes with an extra set of hand sculpts that are both closed fists she comes with the shield and she comes with tila's sword right there as well we look at the side we've seen it Pretty cool. The back, pretty friggin' epic. I love it. God, I love it so friggin' much. And of course, this is from the Revelation series, and there's a whole lot that goes on in that series regarding her character development that we really didn't get to see in previous series, especially in the Filmation series. We get to see her grow and do things that we all knew that was eventually going to come in the timeline of Masters of the Universe, but we didn't know if we'd get to see it. And sure enough, she lets us see a whole lot of what we were hoping for, and I really dig it. It looks really freaking cool. Up next, we're going to take a look at Barbarian Skeletor. Ooh, look at this badass. There's a whole lot going on with this Skeletor that I absolutely love. First thing I love is this Havoc staff. It just looks so friggin' mean, and the, the staff itself is super thick. Uh, he has this really cool-looking saber, scimitar, sword thing going on here. He's got an awesome uh, Barbarian helmet, this cool bat-like armor that's coming down. There is a cape in there. He's got, of course, the mostly traditional loincloth. He does come with a more traditional Skeletor head sculpt, as well as more traditional Skeletor armor, but we'll be looking at that in just a second. He also comes with an additional hand sculpt that is open for his left hand and a fist for his right hand. And you can see in the package, he has a gripping hand on the left and a gripping pointy finger on the right. I don't understand the, the pointy finger thing. That's little, Maybe it's so you can hold the, the staff in a weird way. I don't know. I don't get that. That's weird. But yeah, this is from the new Eternia line. So this is kind of, I from what I understand, this line is basically the a lot of the kind of concept art for these characters, plus their 
um, more traditional looks as well in each package. So, so it just kind of gives us a new way to do Skeletor. He looks a little bit more like the filmation with the coloration in the face. And he also comes with this additional head sculpt. It comes with a goatee. I dig that. A skeleton with a goatee. And I think that's a kind of a reference to one of the classics figures that came out several years ago that was uh, Skeleton Man or something weird that uh, Keldor was merged with to make um, Skeletor himself. Oh, and it looks like actually the regular Skeletor armor might be on underneath that um, cape clasp that we've got with the bat on the uh, front. You can kind of see it underneath there. We're going to get them open in a second and take a closer look. Side, of course, we've got the same artwork we just took a look at. You can see the kind of barbarian Skeletor here with the more traditional Skeletor in the background. I dig that. 10,000%. And on the back, man, that just looks badass. I don't care who you are. That's cool as hell. He's got the cool goatee. He's got this really freaking evil look. Uh, he just looks like he can whip some ass and really give He-Man a run for his money without being Skelegod. And I dig the shit out of that. Uh, you got, of course, the bio here and the cross cell there on the bottom. But we're going to get this guy out of the package in just a second and take a look at him. But we've got one more figure to look at, and that's the man himself, He-Man. And here is the man of the hour, the man of eternity, the most powerful man in the universe, He-Man. Now, this is Viking He-Man. And you can see he's got the cool horn helm. Uh, he doesn't have a spear, but he's got a magic helmet. Spear and magic helmet. Uh, he also comes with the power sword. And it is a different look for the power sword than the one we've gotten in the Masterverse line so far. And we'll compare those as well. He also comes with an additional head sculpt, which is a bit of a more traditional He-Man head. And... In all of the pictures I've seen of this head sculpt, I haven't liked it, but seeing it in person, it might be my favorite head sculpt that I own so far for He-Man, bar none, including all of the, the um, Origins line and stuff. He's got a cool dagger that I think goes into a little scabbard on his boot, and of course he's got this cool shoulder armor that goes over the top of the standard harness. Really, really, really freaking dig that. Don't think he comes with a shield, though. That's one thing that's different, but that's okay, because he does come with extra hand sculpts. He comes with an extra gripping hand here, and an open hand here, which the open hand's a little weird if he doesn't have the the extra shield because it usually that hand is there so it can slide into the shield slot so that's interesting here on the side of course again we've got viking he-man here holding a shield so maybe there is one in there we'll see and you got that handsome mug there in the background looking at us all sleepy eyed on the back here he-man's looking pretty pretty viking and pretty badass he's got the axe in his hand he's got the helmet on some of the hair coming out the side there he's got his shield he's got the loincloth oh yeah the loincloth is different on this guy he's got more of a um a leather type loincloth instead of the fur underwear that we're used to uh he-man being in and he's got these cool kind of monsters in the background looks like he's about to fight off i'd really like to see these in the Masterverse line as kind of army builders. That would be sick. But we'll see if we'll get that eventually. I mean, this line is really stacking up to be something special, so hopefully we'll get all kinds of crazy stuff by the time it's over with. But now I'm going to get all of these open, we're going to get them all set up, and we'll start taking a closer look and doing a couple of comparisons. Holy crap. There is a lot to talk about here, a lot to unpack in each of these figures, but they look so freaking good out of their package. One thing I want to note right away is that with this wave, at least in my case, Mattel seems to have solved the articulation problem. Every last one of these figures that you see here has excellent articulation, including in these pesky shoulder joints. There was no stickiness. They moved just fine. There was no ratcheting. They were fantastic, and they seem like they're going to pose super, super well. Number two, Skeletor's, uh, this armor that's over the top. It is over the top of the traditional Skeletor armor, and we'll take a look at that in just a quick second. Um, I don't know where I want to start with these guys. I guess we'll just start with the man himself, He-Man. And, um, all right, so let me grab him here. Now I want to take a look at the detail on the armor itself. You can see it's got the cross symbol right here, and it's got some kind of almost runic or technological, um, detail there on the shoulder pads themselves. He-Man looks pretty cool. The helmet is a little bit shiny. It's shinier than I expected it to be, and the jewels look pretty cool in it. Um, it does have hair sticking out of the back, as you can see there, like on the thing. It has a um, scabbard or holder for the 
a sword on the back as well and it is at an angle so you can see it really coolly sticking out from his back there uh, the axe is cool my favorite thing though i think is this because it, it's a functional dagger it, it is kind of stiff in there but it comes out and goes into the boot um sheath or scabbard i can't remember which it is really well uh, but you can see he articulates just perfectly every joint is just as loose as you would want it to be the head doesn't go back as far as you might want because of the hair being a little bit stiff but that's okay that's not really that big of a deal in my opinion um you can see the way the sculpting makes it look like the scabbard's being held on by the straps there is a little bit of a line there but it isn't that big of a deal especially if you're going to be displaying this thing um he's got the bracer here which is a bit more shiny and golden than the original masterverse he-man um no shield though no shield and that is a bit of a pet peeve of mine if you're going to put something in the artwork on the character it should probably come with the character in package uh so that that's a little bit of a pet peeve but it's not as big of a deal as um as to ruin the value of the figure because the figure is solid as hell it also comes with this extra head sculpt here and i really dig this head sculpt i think it's really well made it, it's got good clear eyes they're not derpy uh the hair looks cool it's a little bit darker than the uh, master verse the uh, revelation one excuse me um dig that we'll put that on him in a bit and of course he comes with two extra hands the open left hand and a fist uh right hand as well and on him are two gripping hands so he can hold the sword and the axe at the same time. I want to take a quick look at this sword that he comes with to compare it to the Revelation sword. And I got to say, I do think I like the Viking He-Man sword a little bit better. They are basically the same length. The New Eternia sword is thicker, as you can tell. It does have a bit more of a shine to it. I feel like it looks a little more of a glittery shine to it. Um, and the shine goes all the way down to the handle itself, whereas on this one it's got kind of a texture change as we get to the hilt. Um, the leather wrapping on it looks much more like leather wrapping on the New Eternia one than it does on the Revelation Sword. The Revelation Sword looks like more of a traditional, well-made grip, where the one on the New Eternia Sword looks like leather wrapping. Um, I, I, I love them both, but I do think I like this one a little bit better. It's a little bit more representative of the ones that I had growing up and the ones that I remember seeing and kind of... Um, lusting after if you will uh, but i dig that that's really cool i'm gonna put this back on him real quick and you can see here on the back it is angled so you just slide it right in and there he goes and there is he man boom stay there we go. Did have a little bit of a problem getting these guys to stand up right all together. Uh, part of it's because of my table, though, because the white background kind of slopes up right behind them. So if they're not placed just right, it can really mess with their ability to stand. Now, this Skeletor is over the top. Uh, not only does he come with this amazing, breathtaking version of the Havoc Staff. I mean, the detail, it's thick, it's meaty, it's just mean as hell looking. So I dig the shit out of that. Um, he, he's just a bulky figure. I'm going to take this out of his hand real quick. And that's, that's a heavy accessory. There's, that's not fooling around. And you can see here, this just lifts right off and it is a black cape, which I really, I thought was cool. That caught me off guard a little bit Batman-y. Um, it comes off real easy. It's just got some little tabs there that kind of nestle between the tassels on the Skeletor armor itself. And he does come with this cool, um, sword on his back, which does have its own little place to store it. Um, now, one thing I like about this and the one that comes with Merman is they're kind of similar scimitar-ish themed weapons. Um, so if you've got both of these or a couple extra of these, you could use them towards a custom Drizzt Dwarden if you're a fan of Forgotten Realms and Ari Salvatore's um, most famous character. Uh, but he looks cool. Articulation works just smooth as butter. The head sculpt is wicked. I mean, look at that. That, that's a scary dude right there. Um, great detail all around. I really dig the feet. The, the boot cover things are cool. The shin guards are really cool. Uh, nice clawed feet. Just a really cool take on Skeletor and a new way to kind of view him and display him and play with him depending on what your um, collecting philosophy is and however you like to do it, remember, is the right way to do it. 
see if we can get him to stand back up. And this was the guy I had the hardest time getting to stand. There he goes. Um, he's really liking to lean back a bit, which is weird because the... Anyway. Up next, we'll take a quick... Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to go over his other head sculpt, which is really cool. It's a very much more traditional Skeletor look to it. It's got kind of the red deep set eyes. It's got some blackness on its teeth. And the hood itself has some detail to it as well in the sculpt. It looks a lot more like clothic cloth. It even has this little point at the back where the fabric bunches up. That's a cool little touch that you don't see in toys very often. Dig it! Up next, we've got Miss Tila. Now, Tila looks cool. Great shoulder articulation. Doesn't hold on to that shield very well, as you can tell, but the sword fits pretty good into her hands. Um, that's not a big deal. One thing I do wish this and the merman had was a place to store the sword. There is no place for her to store her sword, so she's got to be pretty much wearing it or holding it all the time, which is a little bit of a bummer, uh, but it does kind of match with the uh, Masterverse themes and the way it worked in the CV show. The skirt is pliable. Um, it's not hard, stiff pl plastic, so it doesn't affect the articulation as much as you would think it would if it was stiffer plastic. You can see you can move the legs back and forth and it's just fine. Really great bright details on her. I'm digging that quite a bit. I do wish she held her shield a bit better. I'm going to grab that real quick. But you can see on the shield, it's the basic shield. It's got the same um, grip that the other uh, shields in the line have had so far. Uh, it's got the same basic mold, but it it's colored to match with Tila, and it does that pretty well. And of course, she does come with that extra head sculpt, which is badass. I love, this is gonna be the one that I, I display her with, because that's just really cool looking. It's great detail, the hair looks magnificent. Um, so this, this one is gonna win all the prizes for me in terms of its detail and stuff. It's just really, really cool. I'm going to jot that down right there. And last but not least, we're going to take a look at Merman. Now, I was curious about why he had these open hands if he didn't come with a shield. And it's actually, I realized these are swimming hands. Uh, so this is what you would have on him if you had him in a display where it looked like he was swimming through the sea. You would put these on him so it looks like, you know, he's getting some, some extra grip on that water and propelling himself a little bit faster. His uh, fist... Sculpts are the same as the rest of the Masterverse line. Not much to see here. But we take a closer look at him. He's got some good detail. Uh, his articulation, again, fantastic. Works just like it's supposed to. Uh, he's got this cool scimitar saber type sword. He's got the cool bident uh, spear thing, trident with just two. He's got the kelp um, loincloth, which is stiffer than Tila's, but it's not super hard plastic, so you still can pose him a bit. I like the detail in the boot, especially the blue color, the blue-green colors that they've got on him. Those look really just, they pop for me quite a bit. Uh, his feet, he's got the traditional monster feet with the three toes where the Skeletor New Eternia has a more human type monster foot with five toes. He's got some cool plating on the back here for shoulder blades, more scars and stuff like that. Dig this guy. He's pretty cool. Now, he doesn't come with an extra head sculpt. He comes with those extra hands, which is a bit of a bummer because it would have been cool to see a different head sculpt on him. I don't know what they could have done with it, but it, it would have been neat. Uh, what I'm going to do now, though, now that we've kind of taken a quick look at each of the figures, gotten an idea what they look like, I'm going to switch out the head sculpts on these three so we can take a look at how they look with those. And I'm going to take this guy and put him away for now, but say bye, merman. Bye, merman. Oh, you smart ass. All right, here are our three with the new head sculpts attached to them, and we've gone ahead and put the sword and He-Man's hand there, and as well as Skeletor's. Um, quick notes I noticed when I was doing this is, one, this head sculpt looks really cool, but it makes it a lot harder to pose her because you can't really turn it to the side because the hair really does restrict that. It's very, very stiff. So that's, uh, it looks cool, but I, I do wish it was a little bit more functional. The Skeletor head looks just cool. Um, the fabric texture is a little bit weird with the not matching the rest of it, basically. So the cape doesn't really match it. The, um, the armor doesn't really match it because it doesn't have a fabric texture to it. But on the whole, he looks just incredible. And the He-Man is just, that's just so cool. And I noticed a couple extra things about the He-Man that... Um, I didn't realize in the first thing. First, you can take off these shoulder pads. You have to remove the armor first, and you can just pop them off. But second, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, there's like some battle damage uh, here in the paint on the 
across there. You can see where the red has kind of looked like it's been worn off or something. That could be a manufacturing error, but I think it looks kind of cool and adds to the Vikingness of it. Like you've seen battle a few times and stuff like that. So I dig that quite a bit. Even if it is a mistake, it works out quite well. Um, but overall, I got to say that Masters of the Universe... Masterverse Wave 4 is probably the single best wave that's been released so far. They fixed the articulation problems. They've got multiple head sculpts for three-fourths of the figures. The accessories that come with them are pretty damn solid and look cool as hell. And with especially with these two, Skeletor and He-Man, you get entirely different looks that you can do with them to really set them apart from the previous figures that have been released so far in the wave. And from the, the figures that have been announced so far, these guys really do set themselves apart and I, I just love that. I'm so happy that Mattel gave us that. Um, even though I was kind of tepid about them when they were originally announced, now that I have them in hand, I am over the moon with them. I think they look really cool. Great additions to the collection. Same goes for uh, Tila. She looks amazing. I knew she looked amazing from the get-go. I knew I wanted her. I wasn't so sure on the Merman when he was first announced, but I, I dig him. He's a cool uh, villain. He, he needed to be added to the collection. Uh, definitely. Let's see if I can get him to stand here in the front in this little pose. Um, he is a little bit hard to get the pose in a super dynamic way just because of the way the feet and the boot sculpts work. Um, let's see if I can get it. Uh, 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 come on. Uh, I don't think it's going to work, y'all. That's okay. We gave it our best. But that's Masterverse Wave 4. I hope this told you whether or not this is a line that you want to get or a wave you want to get if you're already collecting the line. My endorsement is fully behind it. I love these guys. These are really cool. I'm looking forward to getting them displayed and doing some play sessions with them. That's going to be really fun. Um, hey, oh, almost. Um, I hope, yay, we got it. I hope you keep collecting the way you like to collect, whether that's keeping your figures mock, opening for display or for play, however you like to do it. It's the right way to do it. And if anybody else tells you otherwise, tell them you're going to send Merman and his army of mer people after them to drown them and drag them to Casey Jones' locker, even though that's a different franchise altogether. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, if you got some information from it. I'm trying to get to 250 subscribers by the end of 2022. And if you can help me out, that would be just fantastic and I'd really appreciate it. But until next time, I'm Jonathan and I'm out.